so today we'll be first starting with logical Venn diagrams. Um, we'll, I think Venn diagrams might be something that you people have already learned. If not, don't worry, we'll just take you through it. So this figure that you see right here, this is an example of a Venn diagram. Okay, now what exactly is a Venn diagram? Why do you use it? So basically, as you can see here in the figure, it is a visual tool, okay? It has, um, you don't, it, it's not about, you know, writing things. It's about showing it in a figurative format, right? In the format of a figure, it is a visual tool. Now, why do you need it? So, what do you use with this visual tool? You show relationships between different sets or groups of things, okay? And how is it usually when there comes? I mean, it can be of any form, but mostly even when you studied, you would have seen, right? Most of the Venn diagrams that we deal with are circles. So it usually is in the form of either overlapping circles or shapes that represent these sets, mostly overlapping circles. So, and each circle represents a specific set and the overlapping area shows the element that belongs to both sets. That, that is what you have in this figure. So here, if this circle is A, and this circle is B, the overlapping area is A intersection B. Basically, what is included in A and B. I'll show you an example for that in case uh, you are new to this topic. So let's take one circle here and a second circle. The Let's say of the people in your family, the people who like only tea are this, okay? They are A. The people who drink, okay, not like, people who drink. Let's say in a day, in the people in your family, so you you have like either tea or coffee twice a day. Okay, so there are people in your family who only have tea and then there are people in your family who only have coffee. And then there are some people who like everything, right? In every family, there will be some people who can just have anything. So there will also be some people who can have both. They'll have both tea and coffee. So here, this A is this a let's say a is the set of people who drink only tea right so in this circle the people that you have will be people who drink only tea and b in this circle the people that you have will be people who drink only coffee so now what about those relatives we talked about who drink both both tea and coffee where do they fall so they fall in this part okay this intersection that, that is what we see here as a intersection b so why is that because you see if you take a point here okay just look at a point here does this point belong to circle a yes does this point belong to circle b yes right so this point belongs to both circles and because of that it comes to the intersection so if you want to include people who have both right who are in both parts that is when you bring this overlapping circle and you put them here in the middle okay the others will be so people who drink only tea so if we were to look at this figure the people who drink only tea will be here people who drink only coffee will be here okay so that's there are different types of venn diagram this was just one type so yeah this is basically what a venn diagram is um, you basically use it to show the relationships between different things and also why venn diagram so the thing is you know um, i'm not sure so okay have you noticed that when you study things, for example, this might not be the case for everybody, but for most people, when you have pictures, it is it makes it much more interesting to study, right? And it also makes it easier to remember. So, for example, if you were to learn something, okay, let's say um, the uh, parts of a heart, right? You have aorta, you have different parts, right? There is this wall, aorta, uh, uh, and then you have your like there are different parts in a heart right so if you were to if somebody just gave you a book and the person wrote just the parts of the heart just wrote it like this is this part there are four walls this is a like there are four sections of the heart four chambers right so this is one chamber so the first chamber comes at the top right and this chamber does all of this it takes this like the, the it takes the blood that comes in purifies it whatever so um, if they just write it down versus you actually have a figure. So I think I'm not sure which grade, but in one grade you will, I think it's ninth or eighth. You actually have the diagram of the heart and the parts of it to study, right? So versus if you had the parts of like, if you had the diagram of the heart and then you looked at the parts and then you were told, okay, this part does this work and that part does this work. 
So um, the, the first cha chamber does this work, the second chamber does this work, and then the third and the fourth chamber. What is easier? It is when you have figures and representation, it is much easier to remember and also it makes it more interesting, right? So in order to even like derive analysis also, it, it is easier. So for example, um, I'll tell you, uh, like if somebody said, you know, um, 14 people drink only tea, 15 people drink only coffee, uh, uh, there are total 20, there are total 50 people, how many people drink both tea and coffee, right? Things like that. So if you you can, it's I'm not saying you cannot calculate it without a diagram, but the diagram makes it much, much, much easier. So you could just draw a diagram here and then you could write the number, right? So you know that the total number is 50. You can just write the total number and then you can write a number here and the number here and then you can easily find that X, right? So why do we need visual tools? It's because for even from like you know if you look at the science of the brain and things like that it is much easier to remember things when you have it in the visual format which is also why if you see your school books you know they have a lot of pictures and things like that right that's not really needed just text is enough but uh, images make it easier to remember so venn diagram is very useful in that sense and it also helps us you know even in terms of analyzing things it is much easier especially when you reach uh, a level where you have like very complicated things to analyze if you can draw it into a venn diagram it makes it much easier to remember so you know when you study venn diagram just use it try to use it in your in for other things like if you have something else to study um you know like you learn about i don't know like say numbers like rational numbers irrational numbers whole numbers things like that if you have something else to study try to use venn diagrams for that it will make your um it will make it easier for you to remember okay so i think that that's enough praising venn diagrams let's get on to types of venn diagrams so one type is the one that we discussed earlier in this one so you have one and then you have an overlapping circle right so this will be a this will be b and this will be the intersection this part will be a intersection b right so this is one type the second type is when you have a circle and then you have another circle which contains the first circle so what does this mean so let's say this first circle is a and the, like the bigger one is a and the smaller one is b this means that b is contained in a so basically, so uh, anything that is a part of B will be a part of A. This, for example, uh, mm, okay, let's see. If I say that this is a, uh, let's say in a school, everybody, if you are younger than 20 years old, you are a student in that school, okay? Like you cannot be a teacher. To be a teacher, you need to be elder than 20 years old. So here, if I take younger than 20, if this, if A is the set of the people who are younger than 20, then B will be the set of the people who are students, right? So basically, if you go to a school, okay, you need to find students in a school, right? So one thing you can do is you can ask, are you a student, obviously, and they'll tell you yes or no. But then another thing you can do is you can just go to the school and check if they are younger than 20 years. If they are, you know that they will be a student because that's how the school system is right so in that case the only thing you have to do is to just ask what their ages so that is where this kind of diagram comes into use so here what it means is that b is fully contained in a okay so anything that is a part of b will be a part of a okay so like uh, another way to say it is you know all students will be less than 20 years old. that's also another thing you can say so if you want to check the age you can know for sure key the cap is 20 years old whatever student is there in the school they will be younger than 20 years old okay so that's the second uh, type now the third type is where you have not exactly a type per se but basically just three figures if you have three venn diagrams this is how it looks okay so I'll just one second I just change to a thinner shade it, thinner shades are make it easier while drawing okay so yeah um, so now what does this mean here here basically it's the same as this but an extended version so you just have a b c okay so um, what we mean essentially is that so this part okay I'll just draw this again uh, right so my circles do not look like circles at all <laughs> i'm sorry about that and i know okay 
so something like this just imagine that these are circles okay so here this part is something that belongs to all three parts have you noticed so like how, how do you check that just take a point here this point belongs to this circle this point belongs to this circle this point also belongs to this circle right it belongs to all three circles so this is the intersection of all of the three things this is where it comes okay and then you have this part this circle does it belong to this circle yes does it belong to this circle yes does it belong to this circle no right because see just take this point this point is outside of um, I, I'll just take a different color then I think it will be easier for you guys to understand okay so if you take this point and if you look at this circle does the point lie inside the circle no right this point lies outside the circle but this point lies inside this circle and this circle right so then what do you know you know that this point is at the intersection of both of these so let's say a and b so this point belongs to a and b but not to c similarly if you take um i'll just change the color back right similarly if you were to take a point here this point will belong to both a and c but not to b right similarly if you take a point here this will belong to c and b but not to a right that's just a very simple thing all i wanted to show was the different types of Venn diagrams right so this is the this is like when you have three circles and okay there is one more type now the other type is i'll show you you have one circle here i really need to learn how to draw circles okay let's see the second circle is yeah this is somewhere close to being a circle i think yeah okay now if you have two figures like this what does it mean Th this means there is nothing in common for these two figures they are complete opposites right so let's say you um this is you and then you have an enemy who is not like you at all <laughs> so you and this enemy if you guys have nothing in common in terms of your characteristics then this would be you and your enemy completely different no intersection another i think better example would be um let's say somebody who is a doctor and not a doctor so whenever you have negations figures like this work so for example doctor not a doctor so obviously a person cannot be a doctor and not a doctor at the same time right so that let's say smoker non-smoker so a person who smokes is a smoker then that person cannot be a non-smoker right so like such negations the opposite of something will come in figures like this because a thing and its opposite cannot you cannot have it at the same time right so smoker no no i'll just write it here smoker non-smoker things like that because you cannot have the opposite things at the same time so these are roughly different types so one is where you have some sort of overlapping the second one is where one is contained in the other the third one is where there is no overlapping at all okay uh, with that being done let's move on now for your exam there are mainly two kinds uh, for your entrance exams that you have in eighth grade you know, for ninth you mainly have two kinds of Venn diagrams that are asked one is relation based and the second one is analysis based you don't have to worry or be tensed uh, listening to the names these are fairly simple so basically what do you mean by relation based what you have is that you will be you will be given a question from that question you will have to find out the diagram okay so you will just be given three things and you need to find out a suitable one diagram okay so here for example identify the diagram that best represents the relationship among the classes given below you have coffee juice drink what is the relationship between these um okay so both coffee and juice both of these are drinks right so you know that two of these should come under something so basically if this is drink if this is a set of drink you know that coffee and juice should come inside this not outside okay so um so if you look at the figure from this itself you can say that it's not going to be this not going to be this why because here no circle fully contains other circles like for example if you take this if this is drink drink does not fully contain coffee and juice right that cannot happen here also here here this cannot even be because here there are only two circles we are talking about three things right so there should be a minimum of three Venn diagrams so this can definitely not be the answer but now you can it could be be this or this now um okay coffee and juice 
a coffee cannot be a juice a juice cannot be a coffee right i mean i don't know now people are coming up with very weird combinations and dishes so maybe but from on a general basis a coffee cannot be a juice a juice cannot be a coffee right so because of that it will be separate so here you draw a coffee you draw a juice but these are going to be separate right and that is this figure we've got in the figure as simple as that did you, do you get it so basically how, how did we just i'll take you through this again how did we get this figure we first looked at drink and we got to know okay both coffee and juice are drinks so now all we need to do is put both of these coffee and juice should be under this is um let me go back to the types this comes under this type where something is fully contained in the other okay um just give me a second i'll change the color again i think we should keep changing um pen colors so it makes it more interactive in a way right so anyway <laughs> yeah so here it is of this type right so because how is it fully contained because if something um a coffee will always be a drink right so if if it is a coffee then it has to be a drink similarly if it is a juice it has to be a drink right so that is how coffee and juice comes under drinks but coffee and juice they do not have anything in common so these will be separate and so this is your figure i hope this is clear we will do more questions don't worry moving on choose the diagram that depicts the relationship between earth sea and sun okay what is this um okay um right so earth sea sun what do you think the relationship is the earth let, let's look at these two first the earth contains the sea right so the sea whatever you have you take as sea it has to be contained in the earth okay but what about sun sun is something that's outside right so sun and earth they are not you know it's not like this earth is in the sun or the sun is in the earth right so then it would be sun would be outside so that is this figure okay so how did we get it again here okay i'll just write here this is earth this is sea this is sun how do we get it because if right so this sea this sea has to be in the earth right so if you see a sea if you see a sea if you see a sea i hope you get what i mean right the, that sea has to be in earth in the earth right you cannot have or like you could say on the earth i don't know whatever so it has to be on the face of the earth or on the earth you, right so because of that sea is contained in the earth and sun is outside it is a separate entity okay now moving on right so that that is just two questions from relation based venn diagrams now we move on to analysis based venn diagrams now what do you do here here it is basically you will be given a venn diagram and then you will have to study the figure and then answer the question that is given so what is the difference so basically these two types you know instead of you don't have to think of all these relationship based analysis based i'll just tell you a very simple thing one type of question is where you will be given the venn diagram and you will have to find out the answer and then the other type of question you will be given something and from that whatever you are given you have to find the venn diagram that is the difference right so one type of question may you will be given the venn diagram the second type of question may you will have to find the venn diagram right so what, what the two questions that we did till now were questions where we found out the venn diagram right and these are the relation based venn diagrams now the questions that we will be solving under analysis based venn diagram are questions where you already have the venn diagram okay that that's that's just it so just two types are just that one is the type where you find out the venn diagram and the second is the type where you are given the venn diagram i i think i'll just write it here um so basically these come under two types find out the vd vd is venn diagram right and then vd given that is the venn diagram is given to you okay so now let's move on to this question the given diagram represents those people who play hockey cricket and badminton find out the people who play all three games okay now i'll give you a moment just look at this picture and try to maybe you know figure it out on your own okay okay um right so now i'll tell you basically you need to see you have p q r s t u v 
we'll do one thing we will go one by one okay or we'll go option by option because you know if there is if there is something that's not even given in the option we definitely don't have to consider it right so let's do t plus u um okay so what is t just okay so right just give a dot near t and see which all uh which all boxes it comes under so t comes in the badminton box right uh, this is the same this is the same exact color i'll just it's not the exact color but yeah similar i'll move to a different color okay so you see that t comes under this box right so t comes under the badminton box okay now what other box does it come under t also comes under the cricket box but does t come under the hockey box no why just take a look at the hockey box this is the hockey box okay if this okay this is the hockey box now where is the point t the point t is outside the hockey box so what do you know you know that t does not come under the hockey box now if you were to look at u u is even worse u only comes under the cricket box if you look at the badminton box u is outside the badminton box u is also outside the hockey box so definitely not this because you don't have it nothing comes in the hockey box okay now next p plus q plus r p p does not come in the badminton okay we'll just write it here so p comes only un in the hockey box okay p only comes in the hockey box q what does q come in okay q is better it comes both in the hockey and the badminton box but it does not come in the cricket box so if you were to draw a point near q it would not be included in this cricket box right it's outside of the cricket box so badminton and hockey now r r also again the problem is it does not come in the uh, it does not come in either the hockey or the cricket box it comes only the badminton box right so this so even if you were to add p plus q plus r you would only get hockey and badminton so this is only equal to hockey plus badminton so this is not the answer now next q plus r where does q come under q comes in the intersection so q does not instead of seeing where it comes in let's see where it does not come in right that's easier right so so the problem with q is that it comes outside cricket q is not included in the cricket box so we can write this q is not included in the cricket box now what else do you have r r is not included in the cricket box either so that that's it we don't have to see we need it to be included in both right so since it's not no now we look at s if you see s okay i'll we have drawn too much <laughs> i'll just erase this okay right so just take a look at s take a point near s okay take a point on s does this point belong to the cricket box yes it is enclosed in the cricket box does it belong to the hockey box yes it comes inside the hockey box does it belong to the badminton box again it is a yes it comes inside the badminton box right so s comes in all three both hockey badminton cricket s comes under all three of these okay so s is the one that plays all the games now we went option by option but for questions that come in venn diagrams it is better to do it without looking at the option so for certain questions like at, you know when we did analogy classification looking at the options made it easier but for venn diagram based questions it only makes it more compli not complicated but it's more time consuming so it's always better if you can just look at the figure and uh, figure it out so see if we were to just think just think we didn't have options if we were to just look at the figure even then we would get s right you look at p q r s o you see okay s is co contained in all three boxes so s is the answer right so looking at the figure is actually much uh, you can get the answers much faster when you do when diagram related questions okay moving on find the region that represents the indian students who are not intelligent oh that's that's a sad question <laughs> okay so here again so this, this is why i thought i would give you a question without options because see for your most of your entrance exams you will have options but i wanted to give a question without options just to see you know because that that's the easier one to do it without options okay and it's also the thing thing about doing without options is you will also be done with cross checking because you see the answer and then you know it's going to be right right so 
you need indian students who are not intelligent basically what do you want it should belong to the indian what indian is the triangle right so so basically we want the figure to belong to the triangle but and the circle indian students right it should belong to the triangle it should belong to the circle but it should not belong to the rectangle the rectangle is the set of intelligent kids right so it should not belong to the rectangle so what do we do whatever you just look at whatever is outside the rectangle right because we do not want these students to be intelligent so we just look at whatever is outside the rectangle so now we have already shortlisted our options from here we had seven options we have already gotten we have shortlisted it down to three it can only be a d or g now in a d and g we need something that belongs to both the triangle and the circle why because we want somebody who is both an indian and a student right that's what we have been asked indian student so what do you do just so you have a d and g just look at these a does not belong to the circle d, d belongs to both g does not belong to the triangle so it is going to be d that's it you're done so i'll just uh, say it again so a does not belong to the circle right a comes outside the circle if this is a circle a comes outside um, g does not belong to the triangle okay this is a triangle g comes outside the triangle d belongs to both okay d belongs to both the circle and the triangle right so you know that this is the answer okay now um yes so we have been done with uh questions under analysis based venn diagram now we can do we will do examples later on uh we'll have an example session where we discuss more questions in detail we'll also have assignments se sessions and all of that where you uh, like you will be given assignments with lo lots of questions right so that was it for logical venn diagrams the only things that you need to know i'll just take you through a recap for logical venn diagram basically the only things are that uh, okay one just know the different types i mean you don't have to be like okay this is type a type b type c but when a question is asked you need to know what the figures mean right so i'll do one thing i'll just through these options i'll take you through the figures and we'll go one by one and we'll see if we know what these figures mean right so this this figure means coffee juice drink what does it mean key there is some kind of overlap but not fully overlapped like for example if this was coffee this was juice and this was drink what we are saying is that some coffees are both juices and drinks and that is what comes under here okay then this is the overlap right so the this will be the coffees that are drinks this will be the coffees that are juices this will be the coffees that are both juices and drinks and this area will be the coffees which are nothing else like coffee but not a juice or a drink right so this is what this figure says when you have some overlap what it means is that you have some elements which does not belong to the second part so a and b what do we mean we mean to say that there are some parts of a which do not belong to b but there are some parts which belong in b also right and then we have this here what does it mean here for example if this is a this is b and this is c what we're saying is that b belongs in a basically if you take any element in b it will also be in a right so here we said if you take a coffee any coffee that you take it will also be a drink right so anything in b will belong to a Th that was this figure All right and now here what does this figure mean something belongs to something else which further belongs to something else so basically if i was to call this a uh, drink juice coffee what am i saying i am saying here that all kinds of coffees whatever coffee you take that coffee will be a juice and that will further be a drink right so this for the third part is right coffee will be a drink but the fact that coffee will be a juice that is not right okay now um right so that's it so yeah all of these we discussed all these figures yeah and then there is this figure um okay so wait this is the example question but we have done this figure earlier also yeah here we had this figure right so in this figure what did we have basically something belongs to something else such as the sea sea is in the earth but then there is something which is not even a part of this no overlap at all that is the sun right and or as i said in the example you and your enemy who have nothing in common right so that will be the um the separate thing okay um and then we went on to analysis based venn diagram and i told you it is easier to um find out from the figure without using the option don't use options okay 
and then we did just one more question from it here we found it out without using options right this was without using options and we were able to find it out easy enough so that's all there is that's that's all the theory that you have for venn diagrams so we're done with venn diagrams for now we will have an example session